Welcome to my game analysis stream of this weekend's English League. So I played two games, uh, my return to over the board. I never saw my my picture here, not not the most flattering, uh, but it'll have, to, it'll have to make do. So we're starting with uh, Saturday's game, uh, where I was playing against Samuel Williams. Uh, those ratings here are correct, so he was outrating me by about 90 points. And he played the dreaded 1d4. Uh, I didn't really have an opening against 1d4 until until pretty much this game was played. Because I, and I have to give a, a huge shout out here to Matvey Galchenko, who some of you might know, he used to drop by the stream. Him and I actually did a lesson earlier in the week. And uh, we looked at... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Maybe let me, let me fix that board so it doesn't move around again so we looked at uh, the triangle here so that's what I played uh, my first time ever playing this opening and uh, I had seen that my opponent he hadn't played much chess either uh, hadn't played much chess either in in a couple of years <laughs> we do have the same coach now so ours was more of a one-off uh, session to to look at some uh, to look at some opening uh, was this for a norm or just a casual? This is English League. So this game was played in the, as you can see here, the Foreign CL, which is the Four Nations Chess League. So it was in England. Um, and the league is 11 rounds in total, but it's always two games at a time. And the final weekend is three games. So I was there just for to play a couple of games. So in this line here, which is the, the note boom, I had seen that my opponent had previously uh, played bishop g5 on pretty much all of the occasions he had met this opening, which wasn't so often. And so I had prepared some stuff here uh, and I had looked at, at the main line as well, but g3 and maybe I have to hide the notation. How do we hide the notation? What do you guys think? We hide the notation. I think that will make it more fun, no? How do we hide it? I need to put an image here, but I have no image on this computer. What do we put there? Put a Luna. Actually, what we can do is we can probably put the... Uh, we'll put the event list. Where is the event list gone? Can I duplicate this source? Okay, because so the, the previous one, so that it, I don't have to move it around. Uh, okay, we're almost ready now, almost ready. There we go, perfect. Some people might still be able to see through it, but hopefully not. Theo, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for um, for the 22 months. That's a long time. Thank you. Okay, I think this will do. So G3, my opponent played after 10 minute fought. And that was me pretty much out of book. I remember that um, I remember that Matvey told me that against the note boom, the, the G3, the Catalan setups are not something to be so worried about. But I, my main thought process here was first try and cling on to the pawn. For those of you who are not familiar with the note boom, basically one of the main ideas is just try and take on C4 and try and hold on to hold on to that pawn. So um, I had two plans here. One, hold on to the pawn. And two, uh, not to get tricked, not to get tricked back into a Catalan. And I'm just opening my messages because Matvey did send me some fan feedback after the game and it comes right here. So uh, my opponent now played knight e5, which serves the purpose to open up this bishop and put pressure on the pawn on c6 which is uh, which is under attack right now 
So I played now knight to d5 to close, uh, close this diagonal, but Matfei actually sent me a message saying that a6 uh, is good here. And the idea is that after knight takes uh, b6, we can play queen, uh, queen b6, followed by bishop b7. Unfortunately, I kind of forgot <laughs> about that during the game because <laughs> I wouldn't, hadn't really looked this up. So that's why I played uh, knight to d5. So now my opponent castle, and I'm not going to spend too much time on the opening because things got really spicy later on and I'm still learning my way around the opening. So I don't want to spend uh, too much time on it. Um, but basically right now things start getting crazy. And here my opponent played a4, which is always the way wants, white wants to go on about breaking uh, this pawn structure on the queen side. And right here, <laughs> I sunk into a 40 minute thing, uh, which was the main reason why I got into, uh, I know Theo, that's, uh, that's on purpose. That's actually done on purpose uh, so, that, so that I don't give the moves away. Um, so thanks for the reminder and I'll make it even a bit bigger. So actually here I sank into a, a 40 minute thing and it's going to be my first uh, question to you guys. Because I in the end I ended up playing B4, but I really, really wanted to play F6. And so my first question to the chat is the knight seems to have only two squares. Um, so let's say, let's say knight f3, what would have been my idea here? Need to cover up everything. So yeah, exactly, MG, MGN. The idea here was to go B4. And if the knight moves now, let's say knight, for example, to E4, then what was the follow-up idea? Exactly, A5. And now this pawn is nicely defended. And so what was the idea behind f6? The idea is that if I do things here, which I ended up doing, now if I go a5, which I didn't do, but now white can just take here. So the whole idea of playing f6 was to chase away this knight so that the pawn on c4 is not, uh, not under attack any longer. But so I was very tempted to play f6 and I had pretty much made up my mind. Now the next question is, why did I sink into a 40 minute thing? What was the move that scared me here? Exactly, Jens and Theo are on the ball. Who knows is also a very good and so e4 I suddenly jumped into my into my field of vision and that's always the problem for those of you for example who have seen my lessons with Sam so often I talk about king safety and king safety is the downfall behind my my beautiful f6 idea here because e4 now if I take on c3 uh, if white were forced to take back, life would be very good. Of course, I could maybe just castle. Um, but the problem is queen h5. And even here, I tried to I tried to make this line work. I thought, okay, g6 is forced because unfortunately, after king f8, I get checkmated uh, and I don't have any any other squares. So g6 is forced. And now I thought knight takes. And after takes, 
I thought, okay, maybe, uh, sorry, no, what I was thinking here is I thought, okay, let me throw in an intermediate check to save this knight. Now, king h1 again, I think is forced because if white captures, then I can take on g6 and uh, I'm up a piece. So king h1 is forced here. And now I think I'm forced to take here. And I was looking at this position. So currently I have two pieces for the rook, which is good. And I'm hitting this bishop and I'm hitting this pawn. <laughs> but I thought after bishop e3, and I didn't look at bishop h6, maybe that's also an option. But I thought bishop e3 is probably good enough. Um, although, could I here take? As you can see, disclaimer, I haven't looked at these games uh, with an engine yet. So this is also my first time analyzing them. But I think I, I don't, maybe here I can. Maybe here I can. Yeah, it feels like there shouldn't be enough development. What I thought, like, I stopped here during the game because I thought this knight just gets trapped. I actually missed that I can take here. But maybe bishop h6 is more powerful. I think the only move, well, the only two moves are, although there's knight here. Okay, well, that's the first <laughs> first tricky moment of the analysis because I said I haven't checked the games with an engine yet, but I, I did have a quick overview and I know that e4 was strong. So let's try and find the refutation. What is the winning line here for, um, for white? This surely has to be the move. I think if I go king here, I think this line we can rule out because here I am correct. I think that after bishop e3, this knight just gets trapped. Alan, thank you so much. Welcome to the party of 78. We are in the middle of a game analysis and we need all the brain powers we can get. So I think here the knight does get trapped on e2. So now the other line that we have to figure out is what after queen takes here, there should be something crushing here. There should be something crushing for white, but what is it? The position looks very dire with the king on e8. And during the game, I thought this was the refutation with the knight getting trapped. But now I'm not sure why I cannot take here. It still looks incredibly scary. I mean, let's say, whoops, maybe the other rook. Um, Helen, have a very good night. And I'll have to go either e5 or c5. I guess e5. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you so much. There is another question in the line with the queen trades. Do I have e5 here? Maybe I even have e5 here. What am I missing? I'm probably missing a lot of things here. Why does this line not work for me? Is c5 not better? The problem is if c5, like what if white just takes? Like now suddenly I think with this king open here, this knight still has no way out. I think c5 I cannot be the way to go because this knight um, is being threatened to be captured on the next move and if white also takes this here I'm here I'm lost but e5 
what's the way forward for white here? It feels, the position somehow feels very bad for me. But I'm also not seeing. Okay, so what? There must be a way here. Yeah, e5 was another problem. That's true, if c5. That's a good point, chosen one. So here. <laughs> so the idea behind e5, the idea behind b5 is to give this knight a square. Uh, because right now this knight has no squares to go to, so on the next move, any move attacking the knight would win the knight. So that's why white has to do something about saving that knight and e5 is putting this pressure on e4. Okay, I still think maybe white first of all takes here. And if I recapture, which I probably have to do, I think. Maybe white simply plays a move like rook d1. And any capture now but knight d7 still white is still holding on somehow but it feels like it feels like there has to be for some e5 somewhere maybe even here if takes maybe the rook moves this rook has to come here. Rook takes a7. And maybe this king just doesn't, doesn't get out. What was Yen saying? e5, b4, and the rook is lost. But at which moment? Ah, here, e5. That is a good point. e5, b4, there is no, no need to rush. And if knight takes, the same, we just take an e5 and this rook is lost again. So I think this line looked more or less convincing. So that was the line with e5, with king here. So we still have to solve this line. If bishop, f, if bishop f8, now what's the way? I think the way is probably still has to be bishop e3 or maybe start even by taking here yeah i feel like there should still and i feel whenever white takes probably we have to recapture although maybe here i can take here but it feels like white can black can probably never never survive these issues. Chris is saying a takes, takes, and e5. Yeah, so this this looks crushing again. And if I capture here, <laughs> I feel like this shouldn't work. Oh, sorry. If a b5 if takes here yeah but this works but and here once again if e5 we just never get to save this rook so i think basically Maybe there is no line that is completely crushing. It's not like black has to resign, but black's always, I think, gonna lose material in the end. And maybe what we can do is we can very quickly now, uh, maybe we can very quickly now check this line with an engine. So I'll turn on the engine lines for one second here. I don't know why, why did the board flip? Um, 
so as you can see i was very happy with this um i was very happy with this after the game that at least i saw um that i stopped myself from playing f6 because of e5 and by the way <laughs> uh by the way e4 i spent I, as i mentioned i spent 40 minutes here this wasn't my main consideration my main consideration uh, was taking here and i thought surely there has to be something for me here and once again i just couldn't i couldn't make it work there's too many things once again this bishop queen h5 is still in the position so um hence why i spent 40 minutes <laughs> i tried desperately this was a note boom uh a note boom Variation I see dragon. So I desperately tried to make this work, but I simply couldn't. There was just too many, too many weaknesses. This bishop will open up, and as we can see, the engine gives a, a plus two advantage. So let's go back to our other line with um with knight takes sorry. With knight takes c3. So queen h5, g6. Knight takes, knight e2, king h1, take, take. The engine does prefer king d7 over bishop f8. It says, oh, after bishop f8, even stronger, bishop e3 is also strong. So let's first look at that, see if we guessed correctly here. If knight d4, I think we saw a lot of this stuff, so very good job to everyone in the chat. Takes. If pawn takes. Oh, the engine simply wants to take here. And then e5. The problem is always e5 in the end, and this pro book gets lost. And if knight takes then bishop c5 and we get too many problems here king f7 okay this is a very engine line the engine now just says f4 and winning so materially wise materially wise as you can see here black currently has plus two points so we have we have two pieces and a pawn for the rook but with this king here we just can't survive all of white pieces are working together beautifully um so i think that sort of, sort of explains why i spent 40 minutes and even though i didn't calculate all the lines perfectly until the end at least i'm happy that my intuition told me uh that f6 wasn't the way forward i don't know why i turn off if i turn off or on the engine it flips the board but so that was the first thing. My first satisfaction of this weekend was this whole F6 moment to, to correctly judge that F6 doesn't work because if it wasn't for E4, it would be good. So after 40 minutes, I had to, to throw out this idea. And I thought in this case, I will go for B4, hit the knight immediately. And I thought I will uh, I will not play a5 in this line because now white simply captures and I think white is fine. So I thought, let me try try and hold on to the pawn uh, on, on c4 with bishop a6. And it's a very, very weird structure we've, um, we've gotten to here. Um, if white plays queen c2 immediately to regain this pawn, I thought I, I can play e3 and the queen has to drop back i don't know how good this is for me but at least i'm getting some extra squares i'm holding on to this pawn so i think that's why my opponent played knight c5 now <laughs> yeah exactly 25 11 trying to trying to keep the pawn at all costs uh bishop c5 came as a bit of a surprise uh, knight c5 came as a bit of a surprise to me but I think it's probably good. We can double check again with the engine later. Um, I felt I have to take here because I did also consider queen a5. Um, 
but in the end I felt it's much more important to keep my light squared bishop because I thought this bishop hopefully if I can maybe play c3 at some point hopefully this bishop can maybe create some pressure along the diagonal so that's why I took on c5 and um, and I thought well I talk a lot about king safety so I think it's finally time to to get that king castled and here my opponent sunk into a very long I think half an hour thought because suddenly white's position is not so easy I thought initially that um, the move for white here should be queen d4 to attack this pawn while keeping the queen central and suddenly I got very happy because I thought here I can play c3 and if uh, if black takes if white takes sorry I thought I might even be able to take with the knight I don't know if that's correct but I thought now I have this pressure here with two pieces I'm threatening a queen fork and I thought if white takes, 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 takes. First of all, I can take it to intermediate. I could have taken intermediate at any point. Maybe even better here. And I thought this position has to be really good for me because c5 is going to fall as well. Um, so once once I saw that, I thought, what does uh, what does white actually do here? Because if this is not a move, my idea is very simple. I want to play either queen a5 or queen e7, and um, maybe even queen e7, so that I, I hold this. And this pawn will be almost impossible to defend. So here, especially with my opponent spending a lot of uh, time, and we can see he spent 20, 27 minutes here, I got very excited. He had a big time advantage at this moment in time. Uh, so he, he did go into the tank and played queen d4 anyway. And now, <laughs> now I had a little uh, brain fart. Because during these 27 minutes, my opponent was thinking, I was thinking, if he goes here, I'll go c3 and life is good. This was the first moment in the game that I got really optimistic. And suddenly, once he played queen d4, who can guess what I ended up playing instead of c3, which was, uh, which was my intention all this time. So Jens, who probably, exactly, I suddenly got very excited here and this move just popped into my mind because I thought, hold on, if knight takes, I can play e5 and now if the queen, and I think I'm correct in this, I think if the queen goes to any square along the fifth rank, that knight, I think, will be lost, like, because here is simply f5 and the knight cannot be defended the queen looks down here i thought if queen h4 g5 and once again the idea is just to to kick the the queen away from the defense although having said that what happens maybe even this doesn't so this was my idea but what i missed and my opponent did take the pawn on c4 and i played e5 and i was very happy with myself and I had seen, of course, that queen d3 was a move. But here is where I hallucinated. In my mind, when I was calculating, the pawn was still on e6 here. And my plan was to go knight e7. So in my mind, the position looked like this. And I thought now I'm threatening to both play knight e5, which would win the, the piece, and to take here on c5. So I thought this line is just winning. So that's why I played uh, f6 and e5. But suddenly I realized if I go here, I think white can just take, among other things. And so, 
when he played i actually i saw it already already here after f6 once again he spent six minutes um and during these six minutes i already realized i messed up and i was like why did i not play c3 c3 was my intention for 27 minutes and then i got excited by this and i only spent like 30 seconds looking at it so in the six minutes he was thinking here i was like please don't take the pawn please don't take the pawn please don't take the pawn but he took it he took it and okay what can i do i went e5 and i was like please go somewhere along the fifth but he went back to d3 and now i'm suddenly in big trouble um i don't know how badly the engine evaluates this only plus one but suddenly i'm down a pawn and life is not good again and we can quickly check the other line with the engine as you can see this was actually one of the only moments in the game where i could have gotten a better position and here uh it's still it's not like oh i'm i'm crushing or anything but first of all a move like rook e1 is not so easy to play here maybe rook d1 but rook d1 is even harder to play to give up that pawn with tempo and I th yeah i think if if white takes that is just uh that position is just lost because of the, the problems on e2 so c3 i think i would have been in in great shape if rook e1 now my move f6 and e5 and uh, this is a very different position uh from from what happened in the game so i was really kicking myself here really really kicking myself so we got to this position and suddenly i understood i'm in big big trouble uh, i'm in big trouble here i still have problems along this diagonal i still have poor development and i'm not up upon any longer so now i played f5 uh, my idea was to play e4 to at least try and close down this bishop he dropped the queen back i finally um well not just to attack to but also to hit the queen and maybe cause some problems so he dropped the queen back and i finally developed my last piece but knight e3 was another move that i um i hadn't seen coming and i think it's quite a nice move by by my opponent also what queen c3 stepped out of the, the pin but while still protecting uh, the pawn on e2 so uh i think also white if i don't do anything white would just take the pawn on f5 so i i played e4 here to close down uh this bishop and protect this pawn but finally now white gets on the attack putting pressure along the, the diagonal i didn't see anything better here because this knight is attacked i don't think i can afford to to go back first of all if i go to f6 once again white can take and i just don't have any any good squares so i i felt that i had to take on e3 and after bishop takes i felt i have to step out of this pin um and here i understood i'm in huge trouble he played rook d6 which i think is a really good move and i'm speeding up a little bit because i know i have a tendency to <laughs> to spend a long time on my analysis and my my masterpiece is still waiting so rook d6 hitting the pawn on c5 preparing to double the rooks and of course i'm i'm in big trouble here but i think one tip i have for everyone watching who plays classical chess is i think it's very important not to to give up uh in these spots like at some point it gets to a point where you just at every turn i was just trying to find moves which will not lose so just try and find moves to to keep myself um in the fight so i started with knight e5 which was Nen jens's suggestion knight e5 does two things first of all it defends uh the pawn on c6 and second of all uh it threatens knight c4 i was thinking that my opponent at some point might play queen b3 and try and um queen b check and try and round up this pawn on b4 i thought if he does it immediately 
I'm probably okay because I can take on E2 and I'm I'm still alive here. Like my position is probably not good because there might be some problem along this diagonal now and this pawn is still weak, but I thought at least I'm still still alive. Did they play bishop d4? They didn't. Is there something wrong with bishop? I think bishop d4 is probably a fine move unless... Or is this rook getting trapped? No. So Chris, <laughs> Chris is asking, is b3 better than queen b3? And b3 is actually exactly the move that my, my that Sam played. And at first I was happy to see that move because I thought, oh, now I don't need to worry about this pawn anymore. But soon I understood actually b3 taking away this square from me forever is uh, pr probably pretty, pretty strong. Especially because now without this knight c4, it gets very hard to, to find a plan. Um, so here, I n my next move looks quite weird, but the idea is so I played bishop c8. And my idea was to bring, I thought if this bishop could get to d5, then maybe my position is fine. And one of the advantages I have, I think, when I play chess is that I'm an eternal optimist. I always see the best in my position. I think if we turn on the engine, so the engine says that this position is plus two for white, but I didn't feel that bad. I thought my position is bad, but not, not losing. So here I thought, okay, let me get the bishop to d5 and life is good. But of course, Sam wouldn't allow this so easily and he played bishop f4. Uh, so I can't go here because the knight would be hanging. And uh, another idea, by the way, behind bishop a6, I thought if Sam stops me from putting the bishop on e6, which he did, I thought then I can get in a5, because I, which is what I played, because I was also a bit scared that white at some point plays a5. Uh, himself and then I think the bishop, the pawn on, on b4 would be very hard uh, to defend. So here I played a6 very quickly. Also, as you can see from the clock times, this is only move 22 and the time control is you get additional time on move, um, on move 40, which means that I had eight minutes left and Sam had seven minutes left for 18 moves, which is not a lot of time, especially considering uh, we were both quite rusty. So Sam now play rook d1, which makes a lot of sense. And I felt he will probably just take and take here. So I went back, I went back to b7, which is a very sad move to play. Uh, but I, I couldn't think of, of something much better. So I went back to, to b7 uh, to defend this pawn on c6. I felt that if this pawn ever falls, I will just uh, be lost. Can black get away with g5? Well, I thought he will simply just take that pawn. And I couldn't see, um, I couldn't see a way, a way here. Because the problem is I can also never continue the attack because e4 would be hanging. Um, so yeah, I thought here I probably can't get away with it, but I did play g5 on the on the next move. I also see another comment saying Bishops be tripping says knight g6 is best. Okay, so let's see. The other problem is I was also uh, scared that at some point this bishop might reroute along this long diagonal. Uh, so knight g6, and now how do we defend this pawn? What's your idea after bishop b, uh, bishop c1? Maybe they'd simply go back. According to small fish. So what does small fish? Say so here, knight e5 back or? Uh, 
Oh, and Chris is saying he wouldn't be afraid of taking on f4. So what is this position? It's probably good for white as well, I guess. Queen f7 and rook d d6. Okay, so these are all very computery lines, but uh, I guess this is um, maybe it's best according to the engine, but would not be fun. Yeah, still plus 2.5, so <laughs> I mean, as, as the saying goes, in a bad position, there are no good moves. So I thought, okay, I understand my position is very bad, but let me at least try and hold on to this pawn because otherwise I'm probably dead anyway. Um, so now Sam played f3, which I thought, yeah, that's a good move. I hadn't seen f3 coming either because... Uh, I think f3 is so strong because if this bishop ever opens up, I'm dead. I understood if this bishop opens up, I'm dead. So what I played here and times was ticking uh, down badly. Three minutes now for Sam, seven minutes for myself. I did now play g5. As you can see, I spent three minutes on it. Uh, and I thought Sam would take, but he actually dropped the bishop back to c1, which is probably even stronger because suddenly... This poor king might get into trouble. And yeah, it, g5 is kind of a blitz slash bullet move, I agree. But I thought, what else? Like, I thought at some point I have to do something active. I thought if he takes, at least I'll do something like this and try and, try and keep this bishop closed. That was my whole idea the whole time in this time scramble. I just thought I have to keep this bishop on uh, g2 out of the game maybe the bishop can can activate i mean i know the position is lost but i thought that was my my main idea and my my best idea um and yeah bishop c1 caught me by surprise but i thought it was a, a good move by sam and now my next idea apart from keeping this bishop closed was I'm in a lot of danger. My king is suddenly so open with this bishop looking to reroute to the long diagonal. So my next survival instinct was let me try and trade as many pieces as possible so I hopefully don't get mated. So then I played rook d8. And now, um, <laughs> rook save king. <laughs> Sam, you guessed my move. Rook d8, indeed. And the other Sam, my opponent Sam, took on e4, which I think is probably best. And I felt I have to go. I thought I can never, I can never recapture here because I don't know if queen takes or bishop takes is better. I think queen takes probably more powerful. I thought with this bishop open, with this queen with this I can never survive here I don't think so I thought my only move is to play f4 and now Sam took took and I'm just trying to think what my plan was if Sam took here what if he took everything and took on f4 Maybe this is good for... Um, <laughs> this is probably also good for white, I guess. Because I fought this check, but then just e3. And if I give another check here, king f2. Although... Can I give, give some spy checks? I mean, maybe I'm, I'm still alive. Um, I'm not doing well. But at least, like, if you can get the king out here, like, in this situation with only two... Oh, Sam is... Uh, not Sam. Jens is saying queen c3 here. But I think black can just take, right? White can just take. and It's a nice idea, but I think the pawn, it doesn't work. Because the bishop is in time to, to stop. 
unless there's something here but wait oh i was thinking for a second knight f3 and this would be so well there's actually two problems this is the main problem but also this still stops in that one so queen c3 was not an option but maybe queen a1 check and at least i'm still i'm still breathing let's say uh, but so instead in this position uh, sam played bishop to b2 and i <laughs> i was so nervous in this time scramble not not so much like nervous nervous and by the way here the engine says i still don't know why but it says it's like plus seven <laughs> so my position thankfully oops oh no i didn't mean to reload the game no <laughs> what did i do i meant to flip the board not reload it okay where were we so i actually hadn't been in a time scramble for so long also ah, what i was saying is that it's a good thing that i didn't realize that the evaluation was plus seven i thought i'm i'm lost but i thought there are some chances um like not i thought i'm lost but i didn't realize i was that lost uh anyway i didn't have much of these thoughts because I was shaking. It was also a bit cold in the playing hall. So I think it was a mix of, maybe it wasn't cold. Maybe I'm, I'm cold by nature, but I started shaking uncontrollably and I was making my moves. <laughs> Some of my moves were made with a shaking hand. Like I'll tell you the worst moment. Like I was shaking, my whole body was shaking. My hands were shaking. It was absolutely a disgusting situation to find myself in. Sam said to me after the game, maybe he shouldn't have taken on e5. I was quite sad when he took. Uh, I was quite sad when he took on on, on e5. Because I thought, oh, if he if he doesn't take, maybe I can get my knight around or try and create some threats with my knight. As we all know, knights are tricky pieces, especially when you're down to to your last minute so sam took and then gave a check on c4 king g7 d7 and he said to me after the game that he kind of missed that i can just block and suddenly he wasn't sure what to do we're still only on move uh, 32 still only on move 32 uh, so eight moves to go now Sam played bishop f3. I think the position is still completely winning for him. But suddenly, suddenly I thought, okay, there is some hope. I will try and round up this pawn. Uh, Sam now played a fast move, king h1. I played king e7, threatening to take the pawn on d7, and now queen d3. And here... <laughs> Here I went down to five seconds on the clock and the move c5, I made it, my hand was shaking like this. I barely managed to put the pawn forward and then it went like this to the clock. My opponent actually told me after the game, yeah, I could see you were shaking and I've been playing chess for 25 close to 25 years at this point. I have never been shaking so badly during the game. I actually, I was very lucky. C5 was the only move here to finally the bishop, the bishop which came to B7 all this time ago, finally comes to life. I almost, the reason I hesitated so long to play C5 is that I was worried that the queen comes in. But then I realized if the queen goes to B5, I can take here and if, white takes i take back with jack because my other move i wanted to play was maybe queen here to take this pawn but i think this one i suddenly realized i think here the queen comes in here and suddenly so i was hes hesitating between these two moves and queen e6 would have just been losing so at the last second 
at the last second I finally played c5 and now my opponent as you can see we're both under a minute and here the miracle here the miracle started happening my opponent I think was quite nervous himself suddenly and I think it's also very frustrating when you're white and you you know you've had a winning position for so long and we both knew it but you cannot find a knockout blow bishop g4 would have been <laughs> a bigger collapse than I could hope for uh, this would have been a bit too much the collapse wasn't quite uh, on this scale but he played queen d2 uh, which doesn't make much sense at all because now I can just take here and um, and suddenly I'm I'm back in the game here uh, and now well we're both under uh, both to three, uh, thir down to 30 second well no it wasn't I'm losing a well yeah that yeah exactly that sense of panic not so much I'm I'm losing it I think here white is still fine but uh, I think it's just the sense of how have I not converted this already? How did I not find a a, a blow a blowout when and after the game when we we chatted after the game and I said to him I also didn't see it like I also felt I was lost, but I couldn't. I think we can go back later with an engine because I still don't know where exactly White could have won easily. Um, but yeah, here unfortunately um, he went wrong with queen d2 and I took here and then he went wrong again. He went queen e1 and he offered a draw. He offered a draw after queen e1 and if he had offered a draw any other, even after queen d2, I would have snapped his hand off. Um, I think even here. But after queen d1... It was too late because here I saw that I can very simply capture on f3 with check forcing this and then capture here and now take finally capture this pawn on d7 and uh, and I'm just a pawn up in a work ending and I, I wasn't sure if this uh, endgame is is winning or, or drawn but I thought at least I can never lose so that's why I would never accept a draw so this is a team competition. I wasn't entirely sure what was going on, um, what was going on in the match. So I thought, let me make it to move 40 because when he offered the draw here, it was move 30, 37. So here I thought, let me at least get to, to move 40 and then reassess. And I think even here, I don't know, maybe the sand game is just losing because I think these pawns are just too weak. And this majority here, the king is in time to defend it. Um, so my feeling, I haven't analyzed it, but my feeling is it should be winning anyway. But now this was the last move. This was move 40. And I only had one minute for my last move, but my intuition told me that rook e8 has to be strong uh, because after rook takes, which was played, I thought, okay, I know I've given up both my pawns here, but I thought as long as I get to b3, surely the the queen side pawns have to decide the game so uh, at this point we've made the the time control and i play king g2 i took and here i don't know if what i played was winning but i think they were probably uh wait rookie three i think was good takes king d6 so this is all the game h4 and maybe here there was a slightly cleaner win. What do you guys think? What is, uh, in your opinion, the, the best move for black? And it's not a trick question. I actually don't know. So word G is suggesting C4. Theo is suggesting b3 and I wonder maybe those two are, are the Kugelbuch wants me in his stream is he even streaming right now he's not even streaming I think I should run the pawns and maybe it doesn't matter but suddenly I got worried about this age pawn so let's see c4 push 
Yeah, maybe just pushing the C phone actually. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I play C4? <laughs> Why not this? This looks very convincing actually, in hindsight. And uh, Austria Bogulus is asking, why not Rook A4? Well, that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. And I thought I can play B3 and then, and then suddenly I realized that hold on a minute and uh, the game is not actually here after B3, my opponent just resigned um, because what he missed, like he thought this was just inevitable, but I had seen that actually he can just push, take and get a new queen. And I don't think I have better anything better than that. My feeling was this endgame should still be winning. And I think that the engines confirmed it, but there would be a lot more work to do. So I was very surprised, very, and he had actually, he had just not realized that the, the aged pawn could queen. Um, so let's go back now that we've seen the end of the game and see what does the engine, what does the engine say here? I think you guys were, and it was, <laughs> was not sunny any longer by the time we were done. <laughs> or maybe it was, it was like 7 p.m. Um, so c4, check, king c5, d5, I guess is pretty much the same. But yeah, these two pawns are just gonna, are gonna run. Yeah, because if now, if now h5, then the rook really does get in between. So c4, c4 was the way to go. And <laughs> Chad Gamer is asking, did your team win as well? Well, that was the, the incredible, the even more incredible thing about this game was that our game was the last game of the match, well, matches being played over eight boards and the match was tied at three and a half all. Uh, so our game was actually the, the decisive, the decisive game, which, um, which was incredible. Jens is saying Blair, you know, Blair, Blair actually lost this game because this game was on the, on the Saturday. So let's have a very quick look just at the, the queen and game. Jens is saying the table basis. I felt, I felt that here I probably just give a check and run this pawn. And the engine says plus six. Um, oh wait, is this not the best move? The engine says king d. I felt that here I should be able to hide my king, but the game would have, um, the game would have gone on for a, a long much longer time at this point and of course if he had seen that the, the age pawn queens he would have played on and I think that's also a good lesson for me because at this point at this point here we had made the time control I suddenly have 47 minutes on the clock and I only spent three minutes on rook takes a4 which I think um, is a little bit careless um, when I've got a simple, the simple C4. So lesson learned and a very fortunate win for me on the, on the Saturday. Um, and a huge win, a huge win for the team. So with that, let's get to the Sunday. Let's get to the Sunday game. Probably my proudest moment in a, a very, very long time. Okay, so on the Sunday, we played 
uh, and this, by the way, the previous game was against the Sharks. Big shout out. I don't think any of them will ever see this, but big shout out to the Sharks team. My favorite team in the league, other than my own team, Shadleton. Big shout out to them as well. Um, so here we go with the with the Sunday game. <laughs> Ostra Bogolus, I actually have the Sharks. Who are you? If you're from the Sharks, we must know each other. Reveal yourself. Maybe it's an obvious answer, but not that I know of. Oh, you didn't play this weekend, but we must know it. Just let me know in private. I'm very curious. So yeah, on the Sunday, um, I played against uh, Lan Yao. She still has a Chinese flag here on chess.com, but she currently... Uh, she represents England. I think she studies, lives and studies in England and uh, very uh, quite a high rating of 22.88. Lan Yao is a C5 player. Almost every single game in the database uh, that I looked at, she had played C5. On the Sunday, there's even less time to prepare because the games start um, at 11 a.m. Pairings come out 90 minutes before which means you have to squeeze in breakfast and waking up properly. Also this weekend, it didn't help that the clocks went forward. So um, it was a very short night. Some drinks were had on the Saturday night with our opponent's team from the, the Sharks. Um, so anyway, my opponent played C5 pretty much exclusively. But maybe she was worried about the Grand Prix, who knows. But she opened with one uh, d6. So this time there's not too much uh, to be said about the opening. Um, there was no prep involved since I wasn't expecting d6 at all. So we get this kind of uh, Philidor structure for her. And I was basically just trying to develop to develop my pieces to... Uh, to natural squares, so I'll I'll gloss over the opening stage quite quickly. The knight very often wants to reroute to via g3, and here here was my first little surprise. I wasn't sure if she was going to go for a setup with g6. In general, I think um, I think in general these positions are just quite pleasant to play uh, for for white. White has a bit more space, a bit more control over the center. So g6, I now played h3. The idea behind h3 was that at some point I would like to put this bishop to e2 and maybe the queen to, to d2. And uh, h3 is aimed against the knight coming to g4. So she played bishop g7. I continued with my idea. And I'm not sure about this plan of uh, putting the pawn on h6 and the king on h7 because later on in the in the game this setup on the king side uh, caused her downfall on the other hand i don't really play the structures myself so i'm maybe not the best placed to give advice but i was quite happy um to to see this emir four years thank you so so much for the uh, 48 months and so good to have you here thank you so much for the continued uh, the continued support so she played king h7 the logical move to defend the pawn on h6 and i activated uh, my final my final piece jens is saying there might be knight f8 g5 knight g6 and knight g4 knight f4 that is actually a very reasonable. I hadn't thought of that. But the problem with... I always felt that if you play g5, giving up these light squares, especially with the bishop here, might be a bit dangerous. But I think Jens probably knows the plans better than me in this structure. So I thought, okay, let's invite the final piece to the party. Rook uh, to d1. My opponent played queen c7. 
And actually, I have to shamefully admit, I offered a draw here after bishop b1 for a number of reasons. First of all, I was really tired. <laughs> Second of all, I might have booked a flight that was slightly too early. Uh, my flight was leaving five and a half hours into the game. So I thought if this turns out to be some long end game grind, uh, I know she's the higher rated player. So the reason I offered a draw, I don't usually offer draw against higher rated players, but I thought I actually quite like my position. Um, I know it's not the type of, of position she usually plays, so I thought this will be a win-win. If she takes the draw, I'll be happy. And if she plays on, I'll also be happy. So that was my, my thought process. Uh, she fought for seven minutes, but then decided to play on with b5. And while she was thinking, I had already come up with my next plan. Who here and now will find out how well do you guys know me? What is my favorite move in the world? Who knows what my... <laughs> the truth, he knows me well. The truth knows me very well indeed. F4 is my favorite move and as Nizahi and not so clear and have all figured out what gets in the way behind what gets in the way of playing my favorite move f4 it is this knight on f3 so that knight had to go Jens was saying knight h4 the reason I went to h2 is because maybe this knight can be rerouted to g4 someday um so that was my thinking behind playing knight h2 and I already here when I offered the draw I got quite excited because I thought either she'll take the draw and I'll be happy I will have scored one and a half out of two I'll make sure I don't miss my flight um, or she plays on and then I'm also quite excited because I can finally get some attacking especially after having defended all day the previous day um, maybe Jens is right. I'm curious what, what the engine says here. I, I wonder if it... So the engine agrees with Jens, knight h4, with the idea of potentially bringing the knight here. So that's a good, uh, a good thing to, to remember, especially I guess after queen c7 with the queen not looking down at this knight. So thank you for that Jens and I'll, I'll definitely remember that for the future. So instead I went to h2 and I actually think <laughs> I actually think that for the rest of the game I played almost all the the first uh, the first lines here so I played f4 and now I'm very happy with my position c5 so how would you guys react? And I, I know this is something that, uh, especially during the SEM le lessons, we have talked quite a bit about tension in the center and how to, how to resolve it. So what are your thoughts on how you would have resolved the tension in the, in the center? So there's a few suggestions. Silesia and Zebedeed are suggesting to ignore the tension in the center and go for f5. Also Wob um, and MGN FNG is saying uh, d5 and shot blackout. So my thoughts here were that if I go d5 immediately I thought black can probably take here and now there's first of all this knight can come and blockade here which is a big blockade that's a beautiful knight here so that's sort of why I I ruled out um, d5 and f5 
now to remember why I ruled out f5 I actually thought that um, that white could take that black could take and simply take you I don't know if I was right or wrong but I I thought I I don't see how to how to continue here Because suddenly, suddenly it's not clear to me what to do. I have to react because this knight is under attack. And if I take, I thought black is fine here. So this is why I, of course, f5, you guys know me. I was very tempted by that. But I see that Louis, um, Louis FF Oliveira got the right answer and I, I think that was to the best way to deal with it. The people who said that shutting down the position with d5 were white, but I think first recapture here to force black to recapture with the pawn. And now after d5, this knight doesn't have the square on e5. So now we shut uh, black out without allowing. So why f takes first? Because as I mentioned earlier, after d5 immediately, I think, and I haven't checked this with an engine, but I think black can take and plant this knight on e5 and suddenly this knight on e5. Um, if you compare this position to what we, we got in the game, which is this, you can see the difference. Um, this knight is a much more powerful blockader than the pawn. Also, the rook has this semi-open f-file, while in the game, this knight has almost no squares, especially now it doesn't have this uh, this square available. Oh, why not d takes e5? I meant I played d takes e5, so uh, that's that's exactly what I played. So, this is the position we got in the game, and I started getting very optimistic here. I always get very optimistic when I have a semi open f file to work with. I thought this bishop is quite out of the game, this knight doesn't have such a bright future, this knight also doesn't have such a bright future. So I thought, I, I started getting very optimistic here. Also, this is a passed pawn, so I thought any end games uh, might be good for me at this point. So she went queen d7, blocking the pawn. Uh, and I immediately, now that this rook was done with its job on the e file, brought this rook back uh, to f1. My opponent played rook c8. Actually, I was quite happy with my next move here. I don't know if the engine... Oh, why not d takes? Sorry. So let's go back to that. Why not d takes e5? Well, here I wasn't too sure how to... Here I wasn't too sure how to continue. And then you mean e5, f5 probably. Is that the idea? And I think now it probably will lead us to what Jens was saying, that after g5... First of all, first of all, maybe there is no threat for white, because takes, takes with this bishop shut down. Like, I think this might look promising from a distance, but I don't think there's a threat here for white at all. Maybe black can simply play a move like rook d8. This knight will always be able to, to retreat. Also, now this bishop is much more alive. So I think this was just uh, this position. Again, if we compare this position to what I got in the game, which is this, I think you'd much rather want this because now this bishop is shot out. <laughs> no, it's not a stupid question at all. So he, now this bishop is shot out and we've got this play, which I think is much better than this play because here... I just don't think there there are not so many threats here. Uh, could black go knight takes e5 uh, in your game line? No, because well here we still have the defender, so knight takes black just loses the the piece. Um, so there was never 
black would have loved to get this knight to to e5 but there was never there was never any time basically to to get the knight there so yeah as i said she played queen d6 here i played rook f1 she played rook c8 and my next move i don't know if it was necessary um but i was quite happy with it when i played it so who can who can guess what i what i played here So Sam is suggesting a3. Let's see what other suggestions. Jens is suggesting rook takes. Zebedee is with Sam on a3. Truth is suggesting knight g4. Luis Oliveira is suggesting doubling on the f-file. Onto Caesar is also suggesting knight g4. Currently, we don't have the move I played yet. <laughs> and yeah, Jens, meanwhile, has realized that the sack here doesn't work because there is still a knight defending, and now we cannot capture here because of the bishop. So, unfortunately, that doesn't work. Uh, Matt is suggesting rook f3. And Shanuson, Shanuson with, I don't know if it's the correct answer, but Shanuson with the move that I played. At this point, I thought, I don't really want to allow any counterplay. And I thought her idea must be maybe to play c4 and knight c5. So I did indeed play um, b3. And I thought, I want to, for those of you who are talking about doubling on the f-file, I thought I want to double on the f-file, but I thought there's probably no rush. So I thought, let me just deal with this first, because I thought if I double on the, the f-file, let's say rook f2, maybe this is nothing for black, but suddenly I have some things to worry about. Like at, at least black gets a little bit of activity. Maybe I could even take this pawn. But I just thought, I don't want to allow any counterplay. Hello, Trix Malone. <laughs> Actually, I think last time I didn't realize you were Prix, but uh, hello, Trix. So that's why I played b3, because I thought b4, of course, I'll always meet with c4. But I also thought now b4, I can meet uh, c4, I can meet with b4, and I'm covering this square. So I thought this way I'm shutting down any counterplay here on the queen side and yeah i don't know i'm curious what the engine says i don't know if the engine approves but i was very happy with it the engine says no need to worry about any of this just get on with it and what does it say here ah but the engine <laughs> the engine is very greedy the engine says just take this pawn and life is good but i think from a human perspective from a human perspective, what does it think of b3? Okay, it's not so bad. I think from a human perspective, b3 makes makes sense to not allow that counterplay. Of course, life is easier when you're an engine <laughs> and you don't need to worry about human considerations. But I still think I was very happy with, with b3 just to shut out any kind of potential counterplay. And with her next move, knight b6, Knight b6 is when I really started smelling blood because I thought knight b6, first of all, I have no idea what the idea, I have no idea what the plan is behind knight b6 because any push, I will always close things down. And I thought this knight is going away from where the action is, which is my eyes were firmly set on this side of the board. The king side, I thought, was where the action was going to be at. So when she played rook b6, uh, knight b6, I really started getting excited. And now I went for the plan you guys were all, or a lot of you were calling for, uh, doubling on the f-file. So rook f3, I wasn't too sure about which of the two squares, but I thought rook f3, 
uh, will always allow for extra possibilities of maybe bringing the queen to f2 so uh, and i thought i couldn't see a downside to to rook f3 i even thought maybe someday the rook can slide to to g3 so that's why uh, that's why i went for rook rook f3 rather than rook f2 i think my opponent correctly decided that now it was time to do some defending so she went rook here because um there might be some lines where if this knight moves where f7 becomes very vulnerable so rook f8 and i think if i pass now if i pass now this knight would probably go away um, and try and consolidate so rook f1 anyway that is the idea and now rook c7 to overprotect this pawn <laughs> snare said hey <laughs> so now we get to the critical we get to the crunch time so what would you play here in this position I am homeless on Wi-Fi. Is that the first contribution of the day? Chop on F6. So Rook takes F6. What do other people think? Snareset says Bishop H6. Icas is with him. Take H6. Onto Caesar wants to play Knight G4. And the move I played, it's one of those. So let's first go through the ones that I haven't played. Knight g4, I thought black probably takes and maybe plays a move like f6. And yeah, I don't think black's position is great, but suddenly I wasn't sure how do I continue here. I just wasn't sure how to continue how to continue my my attack here so that's why i didn't go for knight g4 then the other move um uh, there's another can uh another you continue so snare said is suggesting to continue with king f2 and rook h1 which may be maybe but it feels kind of so even if what if what if black defends passively let's say with queen queen f8 i mean i i agree oh, frank the second person here tonight to have subscribed for two years after emir uh, Frank, thank you so, so much. He was also active in the Discord over the weekend. Thank you so much for this. I really, really appreciate the long-term support. Four years is actually insane. So I agree that this position looks ugly for black and I would hate to be in black's shoes, but I don't see still how exactly I'm going to continue here. So that's why I ruled out knight G g5 now okay let's say black takes because suddenly this king is also not looking so so great here maybe i don't know i guess bishop takes is the idea but let's say takes takes and rook f7 and suddenly this pawn is still protected and suddenly we have to have considerations of our own also black might at some point activate their pieces if this knight suddenly lands on d6 that would be a bit annoying so maybe this is still good for white but i i just didn't like it it didn't convince me completely bishop h6 which was another suggestion uh in the chat truth is saying one more thing here so instead of g5 maybe knight f5 yeah, but that's something, first of all, I think that that's the kind of move that is super hard to calculate from a distance. 
to figure out if this works. I don't think I could ever do it, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Let's just ask the engine. The verdict is in. No. <laughs> or maybe Truth wanted to take here first, actually. Oh, taking here first actually does win. <laughs> That's actually crazy. That's actually crazy. So knight f5 is nice. So knight g4? Yeah, knight g4. The engine likes it. The engine likes it. Okay, so let's turn it off. So knight g4 is good. But I preferred another move. There was another suggestion of bishop takes. And I did look at that during the game. Um, but I first, first of all, if black takes here and here, material will only be even. But then I realized black can take here. No, wait. Then we take... No, yeah. Black takes there, right? And I think we're losing... No, wait. What is this? I can't count anymore. Yeah, we're peace. No. We're rook down. An exchange. I can't count. What are we down? A rook. This is not good. So yeah, bishop h6, I did see. But uh, didn't work. So, uh, queen, but queen takes first, and then what? And then what? We're still down. We've given up a, a rook here for the queen. And here I don't think there is enough. Here I just don't think there is enough for, for white. So that's... Plus rook takes f6. Queen takes... Oh, this way around. But still, we're down. We're down an exchange, right? We're down an exchange here, and I don't think, yeah, without the queen, attacking is a lot less fun without the queen. As true, <laughs> has taught us, uh, has taught us over over the years. So that I think leaves only one move, which was suggested a couple of times in the chat, and which is the move I played. Uh, which is rook takes f6. So I spent I spent 12 minutes here. And the reason the en I couldn't calculate, I have seen that the engine approves it. Uh, I couldn't calculate it, of course, until the end. But the reason, the main reason I went for it is because I thought, okay, first of all, I get a pawn for the exchange. So even if the attack doesn't crash through, um, I won't have such a big material deficit. Um, so it's not like it's an all-in, it's an all-in attack. And the second reason I went for it is because I thought if I don't go for it, maybe black will like drop the knight back and play f6 and then it will get really hard. <laughs> then it will get really hard to crash <laughs> Through. So I thought, now or never, <laughs> now or never, so what to do? It was almost like one of those bullet games where, where there is a sacrifice on the board and I can just never, the plane is waiting exactly. <laughs> so I thought the, the time is now, as Moloko or whatever the band's name is, time is now, time to take that night. Um and take on h6. So I thought here there were a few ways to respond for her. Maybe all three suggestions were good, but I think the main, uh, let's see, let's very quickly before I forget, let's see what the engine says. So the engine prefers rook f6 by quite a mile. And I was shocked actually um, that it was so good. I didn't realize when I played it, I was very happy. Of course, I was very excited. I have no idea if it was working or not. But if someone told me it was plus three, I'd be I would have been shocked. Um, so I thought, first of all, if she drops the bishop back, 
I thought after takes, takes, queen g5 with the knight coming in, I thought this has to be, this has to be. So from a distance, before I gave up the exchange, also as uh, Theo is saying, the knight coming to g4, I thought this has to be, has to be crushing uh, one way, one way or another. So bishop g7, I thought she couldn't play. And so I was expecting uh, the move that she played was the move that I thought would be played, rook h8. Because if the rook is going to move, it's best that it can help defend along the, the h file and give the queen a, the king an escape. So after rook h8, uh, I think there's only one natural move. And what do you guys think that move is? Hello, Arcane Doctrine. So what is the move you would play here? Sam, absolutely. And Theo was saying earlier, Knight G5 was a threat. And Chanyuson, Smithy Mora, Theo, Zebedeed, all and Stefan Field. I think Knight G4 is the logical continuation because what do I always say to Sam when we do have lessons, which hasn't been often enough lately, bring all the pieces to the party. The knight here is looking, attacking the bishop, so it comes in with tempo. And we have just sacrificed an exchange for the attack, so we want all our pieces to take part. Now, from a distance, when I took on f6, when I sacrificed the exchange, I thought the only move for my opponent was bishop e8. Because I thought bishop e7, this one I can figure out, doesn't work because f7 is hanging. And I thought if the bishop goes back, I thought once again, this just looks overpowering, I thought. Um, so I thought that bishop d8 was the only move. And I thought I was going to continue with bishop g5, creating a, a threat here. And this is when I when I sacrificed uh, the exchange on f6, basically my calculation had stopped had stopped here. And I thought this must be good. And let's just ask the engine and the engine confirms this is a winning position. So that's where I had stopped. And then in the game, suddenly I realized I completely in my cal calculations forgot about bishop h4. Um, I, I, I saw it here while she was thinking. She Well, she didn't think for very long, but I think even here while when I played this, I suddenly saw, oops, I forgot about bishop h4. So that's the position on the board. And now I thought this is a little bit annoying because this knight is attacked. And if I have to move that knight, my attack really loses some momentum because this knight was supposed to take part in the attack, not retreat. So at first I was a little bit mad at myself here um, for, um, for missing bishop h4. But now... <laughs> My thought process went like this. Oh, true, if you want to play knight f5 here. That actually didn't cross my mind at all. And I'd be curious to see if that works. I'd be curious to see. We'll have a look if that works. But first, I'll talk about my thought process. Um, so my thought process was, I really don't want to move this knight back. But if I can't defend it, I'll probably have to. And then suddenly, my thought process went like this. Let's say it was black to move. So let's make a pass move. I suddenly realized that bishop takes g3 is not a threat. Because, and this is quite an easy one, why is bishop takes not a threat? Yeah. 
Exactly, because of knight f6, checking the king, and all the squares are controlled, so black would have to give up the queen. And here, um, materially, don't know, it's only plus two points, but I think with the attack and with these two pieces completely out of the game, uh, this is crushing. So this is how the thought process started. So suddenly I understood this is not a threat. So I thought that is good news. But if it isn't a threat, I need to find a move, I thought, that continues building up the pressure. And I actually struggled. Um, I actually struggled to find a move which builds up the pressure. The only one that I could think of was rook f3. And I thought rook f3 is also kind of a bait, like, oh, please take me. <laughs> I'm just defending my knight, but I thought there's no way she will fall for that. And what was my thought here behind? I thought then maybe bring the queen or something. But yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't convinced. I will admit that knight f5, I didn't see. Didn't cross my mind at all. So let's have a look at knight, knight f5. So I think black has to capture because we're hitting two pieces. The only way to defend it would be queen d8. But surely there is something crushing here. Uh, once again, here we can take a knight f6. So that means black has to take. Sorry, black has to take. So what were you guys saying here? Rook takes. And with the idea of rook h5, I think. So let's see. Okay, so my first question is there is night. Maybe my first question is what if queen, uh, but then e5 is hanging, e5 is also hanging. Maybe this just works. Okay, let's just ask the engine because I'm getting tired. Unless someone in the chat is seeing a defense for black. This actually works. So knight f5 was winning as well. But what does the engine want? Take, take, and f6. And after rook h5, King g6, and actually it's not, not over just yet. Thank you so good, Sand Snared. So it was against the Sharks and against, um, against, who was this match against? Against Wood Green indeed, Wood Green Youth. Thank you so, so much. And good to hear you're local. Thank you. And Jacob did have a brilliant weekend. So this gives white an advantage as well, but it's not over just yet. And this bishop c8 is actually one of the moves I had on my radar that might be annoying for black to, to bring back the, the bishop. So, knight f5 good, but not crushing. Not crushing. So, let's go back to the position in the game. So, one of the reasons, for example, a move like rook f3, which I had thought about, one of the reasons that discouraged me is I thought a move like bishop c8, simply. And suddenly I wasn't sure how to, how to um, continue here. Onto Caesar is saying, since bishop cannot take here, as we saw, maybe bishop d3. But then once again, I thought if black can somehow untangle with bishop c5, I wasn't sure how to continue. So here in, in this position, I actually um, spent quite a bit of time because I just couldn't figure out a way to, to crash through. And the position did look so promising. Um, <laughs> but 
Is that Alex I'm hearing? If that's Alex, he's choosing his choosing his moment very well. I think Jens. <laughs> Jens is on to something. Jens is on to something. Bishop G5. So Bishop G5. If black takes, then we have the same position as earlier after Bishop D8 indeed. So this doesn't work. This is crushing for white. But of course, bishop g5 has the little problem that it gives up uh, the, the knight on g3. So what's the continuation here? So knight f6, I'm seeing some suggestions, but here it's not a fork just yet. King g7. <laughs> yes, Jens with the answer, bishop h6. Bishop h6 checking the king. The king once again has no squares. So rook takes is forced. And now we get the dirty fork on e8. And uh, here once again, it will only be plus two points, but the position is uh, absolutely crushing. This rook is hanging. There's too many weaknesses in black's camp. So this indeed was my little idea I actually i was wondering if bishop f6 was working as well uh but knight f6 once i saw knight f6 i thought and funnily enough so i played bishop g5 and she had her hand over the bishop to take on g3 and i thought oh my god this would actually be the nicest finish of my life but unfortunately she realized at the last moment but i think bishop g5 might be the nicest move I've ever played because I think this is quite a an uncommon um, this is not a very common not a very common motif to to give up everything to set up this this fork on e8 so um, bishop g5 yeah is my my proudest moment <laughs> my proudest moment in a long long time um, Bishop g5, actually the engine, um, just, yeah, it's basically just game over already. I found she, I think she found the, the most stubborn defense, uh, which is to, to capture, no, sorry, not to capture, to play King g8, but yeah, Bishop g5 will go into my... When I ever write my best games collection, there will probably only be like three games in there. <laughs> but Bishop G5 will, uh, will feature prominently. Uh, so pity she didn't take on G3, especially when she was hovering, but she played King G8. And now I took on H4, bring in the strongest piece, uh, Queen to G5. And once again, if the rook drops back anywhere, um, it will just, there is just, first of all, knight f6 here. If the rook drops back here, now I'm not even sure how all the lines work, but was it king? I think knight f5 was what I was intending. But it's gonna fall, <laughs> it's gonna fall apart one way or another. Um, I think even I, I had some ideas of knight f5 followed by queen here and but one way or another it, it 
it just loses. So she had no choice but, but to uh, capture. How many moves ahead are you capable of thinking? That really depends on the position. The game we saw earlier when I was calculating this f6, when there are so many pieces on the board and it's such a mess, you cannot calculate that far. Endings are more straightforward, of course, to calculate because often moves are forced, there's less pieces, so it's easier to to visualize. So in an ending, maybe I can even calculate up to 10, 20 moves in a middle game. It's a very different story. It also it depends very much on how forced the position is. If every move is a capture or a check, then it's easier. But uh, if it's a messy position, it's hard. So here uh, I instantly recaptured with the pawn just to keep uh, my queen on, on the dark squares. Um, and she played c4. Once again, the engine here didn't think my my next move was the best. It's still winning. Who can guess what I did play after c4? And if you were here earlier, <laughs> earlier in the game, you will probably know what I played. I think Shen Yusun, yeah. Shen Yusun gets it. B4. Remember all this while ago. <laughs> all the way, all the way back. All the way back. So much far back that I can't even find it anymore. Where is it? Too many, too many lines here. All the way back on move 21, when I played B3, I had told you guys that my idea was to meet c4 with b4 to stop any counterplay so now the time had come i thought no queen c5 check for you i think knight f5 just going forward was winning but i thought nah i don't want to allow any <laughs> anything <laughs> so i did go b4 let me just i'll double check what the end i think the best move was indeed knight f5 but as you can see b4 close close second i think once again from a human perspective b4 makes sense um just to to not allow anything because now knight d7 but this check is not the same because i thought oh if the c file opens i'll have to worry um so yeah i think b4 i would play play it again even if i saw the engine evaluation and it told me knight f5 is a little stronger than b4 i would play b4 a hundred times out of a hundred just um i think from a human perspective <laughs> yeah sam indeed it was not the best game for this poor bishop here uh, i think it was just from a human perspective it makes sense to don't allow any potential counterplay so she played knight d7 now, which makes sense, trying to bring some pieces to defense of the king and also open up this square for the queen so that that queen can get out of the attack with a tempo. And this is the game, but it doesn't matter because I just play king h1. By the way, I thought very briefly, should I go to h2 or h1? But there is no difference because white's attack is going to crash through and um, the engine says both moves are equal because there is no no counterplay on any, either square. Um, <laughs> B1, no star either. But B1 at least guarded E4 during the whole game, which was very important. E4 was a... E1, E4 was the, the cement that was keeping everything together. So the bishop didn't take an active part. But it was a star guarding the cement of our position for the whole game. Um, so king h1. And now for the finish, knight f8 makes sense. So how would you guys continue here? Like the sequence that I played, I think, can be played in both uh, there's a sequence that I think the more move order doesn't matter so much. So let's wait for a second. Brian is suggesting su suggesting rook f3. Rook f3 
three actually might be might be nice. Sam is suggesting knight h6. The problem with knight h6 is what? How do we con continue after king g7? Because we don't have this square and f7 is defended, so black is still defending along along these two ranks. And actually, that will probably give you a hint to what I did do because. What I wanted to do, oh, queen a5, queen a5 is very sneaky. And will you checkmate me here? <laughs> Things get crazy now. I oh, know, sorry, but here there's knight h7. Then maybe rook here. Hello, DJ Solo. Maybe knight h6 is also good. I'll have a look with the engine. But the move, we'll have a look if it works. Maybe it works as well. Maybe because I did see, I did eye up this pawn, but I was talking about this coordination. So that's what I wanted to break because I knew once we break this coordination, DJ Solo is saying queen h6, but queen h6, I think actually doesn't work because the problem is now black can take and the queen is looking at our queen and that queen is defended. So here suddenly I think we're just losing. Because unless I'm missing something, there is just no time to, to get the rook in. So knight, uh, queen h6, we cannot. That's one step too far. Uh, but Theo, thanks for stopping by. And yeah, I went for, indeed, forgot name on the train. And did someone else. And, sn uh, and snared. I did play knight e7 check. For those of you who were saying d6 first, d6 is also, I think it would lead, it will lead to the same, to the same thing. But I thought, why not start with a check first thing matters. Um, if black takes, obviously then we're suddenly material up. I remember at this point, I'm already, I'm up a pawn and with the attack. So if black has to give up any more material, of course, it's just that lost. And, um, if the king steps to h7, f7 hangs, and if the king steps here, now, well, we can also at least take here, followed by queen h6. So the king has to step to g7, and now I play d6. d6, um, if black takes, we fork, and um, the problem is if the rook moves, now I have queen f6. So that's what, why I was talking about breaking this coordination. Now we can uh, go queen f6 and take on f7. So after d6, my opponent tried one last defense, rook h7, hitting the queen. And what is the finish here? Very nicely spotted by Brian and Zebedee. Originally, when I played d6, my intention had been to take on e5, which is also winning. But then when I got to this position, I suddenly realized why, and I like how this just flashed up, <laughs> why take on f5 when there is mate into on the board. Rook takes f7, she resigned here because king takes queen takes, king f8 is the only square and queen g8 would be made. If she doesn't take, the only square is here, but now I can take on, on e5 and uh, that's a mate right there. So very satisfying to, to end uh, the game with a little rook sacrifice leading to mate. And all in all, I mean, a game that I was as I think I've made quite clear, I was very happy with. Um, let's finally, before we wrap this up, check this position uh, and your move suggestions. So Sam, your knight h6 
was also winning. I'm curious if and Queen E5 was winning as well. Oh, and even stronger than Queen H8, which also wins, but Rook H3. So your move Knight H6 was winning as well. And I think, unfortunately, Queen here doesn't work. Oh, but not for this reason, but even stronger is F6. What's even the defense here? Oh, D6. So, yeah. But I think, actually, in this game, if we go back, one of the reasons I'm so happy with this game, it was a very, very satisfying win indeed. So f I think it's one of the cleanest games I've ever played. So I got out of the opening with this nice advantage. And if we now, wait, if we, if I show you the notation this time around. So, okay. So, okay, I'll play through the opening fast. Uh, so let's say starting from, from here. So I think I played an almost, okay, bishop h1. The engine doesn't understand <laughs> this bishop, which was never to move again. <laughs> it dropped it back to b1 and it did, it did its job from b1. But I think an idea which uh, Jens had mentioned earlier, and for those of you trying to learn something, I'm also trying to learn something here, knight h4 immediately, uh, even stronger, and just trying to get on with the attack on the king's side immediately. Uh, and once again, knight h4, as we saw earlier, slightly stronger than knight h2. Um, and again, as we see, it was not a perfect game, but this engine also is not the strongest. <laughs> so c5. And I think now we started just playing close to perfect. Rook f1. Rook f uh, b3 again b3 but although the engine doesn't approve i still think b3 i'm very happy with the engine just wants to get on with it and says c4 is not a problem just take the pawn but i prefer to oh to not not allow any any of that let me scroll down um so b3 knight b6 and from here on out, rook d1, rook takes f6. I was shocked after the game when I saw that rook f6 was actually the top move. Knight g4, also very strong here, by the way. In the game, I had considered knight g4, but uh, I thought bishop takes was, was stronger. Rook h8, knight g4, and here, I think bishop g5 maybe the most satisfying game uh, the most satisfying move i've ever played over the board in my life um king g8 takes queen g5 and yeah basically i never let the advantage slip and convert it with this nice rook f7 so all in all i think a game that I'm just so, so, so happy with. 